Hey Valley, tonight we're going to work on solving real world problems uh, using percentages and all of the things that we've been working on. All right, tonight's trivia question Who is the richest person in the world? We'll get back to that in, after our lesson. Tonight, officially, the target is 7.4a. I can solve real world problems involving percentages. Let's do this thing. All right, Mrs. Carruthers has bought her son, Declan, a total of 12 rescue heroes on eBay. He now has 40% of the entire collection. How many rescue heroes are in the entire collection? Use the box, Luke. <sighs> Strong is the force within the box. Actually, that's a combination of Darth Vader and Yoda. Anyway, let's get back to the box. All right, so we're going to use our box to solve this. Why not? All right, let's see. Uh, there are a total of how many... Rescue Heroes. So the whole part is going to be the part that we're missing. We know that he has 12, and we know that that 12 is 40%. So we've got this in here, and we'll use our still our two rules that we used before. We're going to multiply diagonally and then divide the product by the third number. All right, so let's get my calculator here. So he has 12, and we're looking for the total. So we know that 12 times 100 is going to be 1,200, so I'll just put that in. 1,200, that's my product, and I'm going to divide it by 40. And that equals 30. So let me pop this number in, see if I can't get that up there. There we go. So 12 out of 30 equals 40%. So my answer is there are 30 rescue heroes in the collection. Does this answer make sense? Well, sure. If he had 12 of them and that were 50%, there'd be 24 rescue heroes total. But it's 40%, so yes, my answer makes sense. This is the kind of logic and how we're going to go about solving real-world problems tonight. All right, let's get to the box. Luke, use the box. Yes, we are going to apply what we've learned to solve real-life problems using the box and, of course, a calculator. So we're, we're, while we didn't get to use that for estimates, we get to go back to the calculator on these problems here. Here's the first problem. On a test, you get 34 out of 40. What percent of the problems did you answer correctly? All right, so we know that there are 40 on the test, so I'll put that's the whole, and woo, that's the whole, and we've got 34 correct. So I'll put that in there, that's the part. So same thing, we multiply diagonally and then divide the third number. All right, so we know that 34 times 100 is 3,400. So 3,400, and we're going to divide that by the third number, which is 40, and we get 85. So let's pop that in, 85%. All right, so I got 85% of the problems correct. Does this answer make sense? Yes, it does. If I got 90% correct and missed 10%, I'd only be missing four problems. That'd be 36 out of 40, right? Because we know how to find 10%. So yes, my answer makes total sense. All right. It's really important to ask those two questions at the end. Did I answer the question and does it make sense? Because on these next couple of questions, it's going to be a little tricky. All right. A computer normally costs $600, but it's on sale for 35% off. How much is the discount? All right, so we know that the whole is going to be down here at $600, and we know that 35% of it is going to be the discount. So I got my 35% in, and I'll multiply diagonally, just like the instructions say. So that's going to be 600 times 35%, sorry, 600 times 35 gives me a total of 21,000 and I'm going to divide that by 100. That's my third number. Multiply diagonally, divide the product by the third. That equals 210. So, let me get this and pop it up here. The part would be 210. The computer is discounted $210. Am I done? Mm, let me make sure I answer the question. How much is the discount? The computer is discounted $210. I got that right. What is the sale price? There's another problem we have to do. So you would have to take the 600 
subtract the 210 and you end up with $290, I wouldn't have got it right. I wouldn't have answered both those questions if I did not go back and check it. Let me just make sure that these two add up to be 600. So this is 400, 500. I'm still getting it wrong. 390 plus 210. This would be 500, and there's the other 600. All right, you saw me just make a mistake there, but I double-checked my work, and I caught it. Does my answer make sense? Well, yeah, if the computer was 50% off, it would be $300 discount and $300 the price. And so our numbers here reflect, you know, 35%. Okay. Let's go on to the next problem, where it gets even trickier. And again, just make sure you're reading the problem carefully. And You saw how quickly I had made a mistake there and changed it. All right. In a parking lot with 250 parking spaces, 40% of them are vacant. How many spaces are occupied? All right. Well, I know that there's a total of 250, so I can pop my 250 in. And 40% of them... Look, I'll lay that right over the top. 40% of them are, or are vacant. So i got to figure this out. So let me get my calculator out here. So I know i got to multiply diagonally 250 times the 40 will give me 10,000. If I divide that by 100, I get 100. So, let me grab this and put that in there. So I got 150 over 250 is equal to 40% or 40 out of 100. Okay, did I answer the question correctly? How many spaces are occupied? Uh, no, I didn't. 100 spaces are empty. I have to go back in and subtract 250 minus that 100, and I find out that there are 150 that have cars in them that are occupied. See how easy it is to make a mistake? You use the box to get the answer, but sometimes you have to tweak the answer to make sure you're answering the question. I'm going to double check it. How many spaces are occupied? Okay, there are 250 total, 40% of them are empty. So here's the 40% that are empty. Yes, 150 have cars in them. 150 are occupied. Does it make sense? Yeah. A half of them, half of it or 50% were uh, vacant. That would be 125. So we're looking good. All right. Your turn to try a couple problems. Go ahead and let me drop the screen. Give this one a shot. Go. All right. Let's see how you did. Ah. Uh, Charlotte donates 5% of her income to charity. If she donated $3,000 last year, what was her total income? All right. So she donated 5%. We know that. Let's see if I can get it right over the top again. Nice. Last year, she donated $3,000. So that was part of something, but we don't know what the whole was. So we'll multiply diagonally, and this gets a little bit tricky. 3 times 1 is 3, right? But I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. And I have to divide that by my 5. And I get 60,000. Okay, that sounds like about the right number for a salary. So let me put this down here. So I got 60,000. All right. Let me just say, make sure I answered the question. If she donated $3,000 last year, what was her total income? So I'm saying that 3000 over 60000 is 5%, or is 5 out of 100. So I said that she makes $60,000 a year. What was her total income last year? 60000 Does my answer make sense? Yeah. If she were to give 10% of her income, 10% of 60000 would be 6000 so 5% would be 3,000. So yes, my answers make sense. All right, and here's another one you can try. Tracy's soccer team scored 80 goals this year. Tracy scored 30% of these goals. How many goals did Tracy score? Go ahead and give it a shot. 
All right, let's see how you did. All right, we know that she scored 30%, so we can slap the percent in. We know that the total number of goals was 80. So multiply diagonally, get the calculator here and clear it out. So 80 times 30 gives, gives me zero. What? 80 times 30 equals 2,400. And now I have to divide that by 100. And that gives me a total of 24. So I got 24 goals out of 80. And that would be 30% or 30 out of 100. So make sure I answered the question. How many goals did Tracy score? She scored 24 goals out of the 80. That makes sense. Would my answer make, does my answer make sense? Well, yeah. If she scored 50% of the goals, this number would be 40. So 30%, yeah, that looks right at, right at 24. All right, good job working through those. Here's your uh, test problem, and I'll just pause for a minute while you can read it. All right, let's see if you can draw your own box and solve that problem without any help. All right, the answer to tonight's trivia question, who is the richest person in the world? That's not Bill Gates. It had it flip flop in last May. So it's um, this guy right here. His name is Carlos Slim Hilo, and he made his money uh, with telecom uh, from Mexico City is where he lives. Bill Gates is worth seventy two billion. This guy is worth a billion more at seventy three billion, uh, and of course he's um, you know the Microsoft. And both of them say self-made, which means they developed the concept, the technology, and came up and developed their own company. All right, but what does a billion dollars really, you know, what is a billion? We hear that number all the time. A billion dollars in America is a thousand million, and it's written like this, total of nine zeros. But that still doesn't quite, I can't wrap my mind around how big a billion is. So how about this one? If we wanted to make a book with a billion dollar signs in it, and we printed 1,000 per page, as before, with the pages printed on both sides, our book would be 500,000 pages long. That's a long book. Wow. All right. Thanks for listening. Hope you have some concept of what a billion dollars is and also how to solve real world problems.